We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you? I'm not going to complain. Um, we are doing two episodes this week because I felt a little bit crazy. And I wanted to do a, a 2026 mock. I, you know, I, I can't. Crazy fool. I, right? By the way, new tradition, <laughs> good tradition. Ooh, that, oh, it, that one's going to bubble. That one's going to bubble. That one sprayed a bit, but that's okay. Um, let's not waste any time, Kyle. Let's get right to it. The first ever Sloopcast 2026 mock class. I'm excited. Are you excited? We're so excited, Jared. So excited. We're, <laughs> we're, we're absolutely thrilled to be here. Um, should we start with the quarterbacks? Is that, that is tradition? That's tradition. All right. That, that is tradition. tradition. Quarterbacks. I'm going with Die Bell. Uh, he is a quarterback from the state of Florida. Um, Ohio State has a few different options here. Let's talk about some of the other potential options. Um, Jonas Williams. Uh, who is uh, from the state of uh, Illinois. You have Nathan Bernard, who is a, an Ohio kid. Uh, Jared Curtis was a guy who I think we all thought was going to be maybe Ohio State's quarterback in this class. Um, and then weirdly enough, when Ohio State made the quarterback coach switch, uh, Jared Curtis apparently is very close with Corey Dennis. Um, and he ends up committing elsewhere, but it's s super early in the process. Keep an eye on Die Bell, but also keep an eye on Jared Curtis and Nathan Bernard and Jonas Williams. And, and quite frankly, probably, uh, I, I could have included a couple other guys on this list as well, but I didn't. Um, mm -hmm. so super early in this process, but I told myself to just pick one, so I'm picking just one. I'm going with Bell at the quarterback position. Yeah, yeah if you scroll down a little bit, Jared, there. Yeah, he's number four oh. quarterback in the class and the best player out of the state of Florida in the early, early, early recruiting cycle. Yes, early, super hyper early in the recruiting cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, running backs. So I want to own something up front. Whenever I do one of these super early mock classes, and this is the, uh, maybe the earliest we've ever done a mock class. Whenever we do one of these, two things I tend to do, two things I tend to lean on a little too hard. I end up picking a lot of Ohio guys, and I end up swinging for the fences on some national guys. So I end up going just like some big name national guys and then some Ohio guys. Um, from the state of Ohio, um, Shahan Alston. Um, he is from, uh, Paines, uh, Painesville, Ohio, um, running back and, uh, from the, uh, state of Virginia, we have Savin Hitter. Um, I feel pretty good about both of these guys, Ohio state's chances at, at both of these guys. Um, it's obviously super early. I don't want to be calling anyone like a lock or a sure thing or anything at this point. Um, these are both very talented guys. Um, Alston is a top 200 player. And hitter is a five or near five star guy. Um, I, I think, you know, good early relationship there, but of course, super duper early in the cycle. Um, filling out the additional running back targets and the running back targets aren't going to go super deep because 
yada, 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 very early in the cycle. I can't say it too many times, but I'm going to say it too many times super early in the cycle. Um, so I'm trying to keep the names limited here because otherwise I could have done a, I didn't want to just like list every single guy who Ohio State's put an offer out towards or has had on campus, right? So I'm trying Ooh. to keep the list a little small. Um, Javian Mallory and Messiah Mickens are uh, from uh, Florida and Pennsylvania, uh, respectively. Two guys Ohio State has good early relationships with. Wouldn't be shocked to see either of these guys in the eventual class either. Yeah, I would I would suspect more for Mallory. Uh, get, Mickens, maybe not so much unless there's a lot of change or a lot of stuff that would go along here. Because Mickens, it, it is early. It is early. But Mickens did, Mickens has already given his, his verbal yeah. commit to Penn State already. Yeah. I know. It's too early for me to care about commitments, quite frankly, at this point, if I'm just being honest. That's fine. And that's fine. Yeah. Now, if he was like from East Pennsylvania, maybe I would take it a little bit more seriously, but eh. Wide receivers. Chris Henry. Chris Henry Jr., that is. Um, he's breaking the... Breaking the um, the the curse here, right, Jared? He well, he actually has to sign to break the curse. Yes, <laughs> you, you got to break the Mater Day Martyr Day curse for for Ohio State. Um, hopefully, he doesn't break the curse. Hopefully, um, if you listen to our 2025 episode that we put out earlier this week, uh, we did 2025 mock class earlier this week. Um, hopefully that 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 honor has already been has been uh used up by Jordan Davison if not i feel like chris henry is going to follow all the way through on his commitment i really don't have any concerns there um you know of course be a little concerned about oregon or usc with him being out on the West Coast, potentially even UCLA, I suppose. Um, not so much UCLA, though. Um, but just keep an eye out. Again, it was much easier to feel confident about keeping him when he was in Cincinnati. And again, I don't feel bad. I feel very good that Ohio State will carry this commitment with Chris Henry Jr. all the way through the signing, all, all the way through signing day. I feel great about it even. I would just feel better if he were still in Cincinnati, but I still feel great about it. That's that's it. Two additional names in the wide receiving class, uh, Jabril Brady from the state of Florida and another Ohio kid in Peyton Cook. Uh, Peyton Cook is uh, another Archbishop Hoban kid from Akron. Um, Jewel Brady's a highly rated, highly skilled Florida kid. Um, additional names to watch at the wide receiver position. Malachi Tony is, is, I mean, they're all incredibly talented, of course, but another talented Florida kid. Uh, Justin Hodge from the state of Ohio, Devin Carter from the state of Florida, um, Brody uh, Keefe from North Carolina and Elijah Harris from the state of Ohio. Some additional names to keep an eye on. Um, again, super duper, super duper early in the cycle. I feel pretty good about the three guys I have in the class, but God, so much will change. So much will change, but just tried to go for my three most likely. Those are the three most likely I landed on. Tight end. Now, in our 2025 mock class, I pointed out that, or I ended up only having one, one tight end in that class. Once again, I only have one tight end in this class. That can't happen. You can't, you can't do one tight end back to back. I do think they end up with a second tight end in the 2025 class. And more likely than not, probably also 
a second tight end in the 2026 class. You want to have two in both, but you can't do one in both. And that is currently what I have mocked. But that can't be reality. That can't happen. Going to need some additional some additional guys for sure. A um, couple other tight ends to keep an eye on. DJ Howerton from North Carolina and Cooper McCutcheon uh, from the uh, state of Ohio. All right, Kyle, I, I was teasing. I was teasing the offensive line a lot in the 2025 class. You were. I said it was going to be a very big class. I said it was going to be a very talented class. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I am ready. I have a six person offensive line class. Oh boy. Oh boy. I told you. Warned you, Eden. <laughs> We're going to start off with Micah Smith, who is one of the best offensive tackles in the country at the 20 uh, for the 2026 class. Um, top 100 kid, one of the best tackles in the country. Um, Ohio State has a great relationship with him already um could break the if again we're talking about breaking curses you know if david saunders doesn't break the curse for the big name out of state offensive tackle then we might you know get micah smith to break that curse i feel very good that micah smith ends up in this class it's a little bit easy you know we're talking about running backs you kind of have to just be like, it's so early, it's so early. When you talk about wide receivers, you got to kind of be like, it's so early, it's so early. Quarterbacks and all, and offensive tackles specifically, the, those recruiting sessions, those recruiting decisions tend to happen earlier. Um, it's not to say last second flips don't happen at every position because they do, of course. Mm -hmm. But... You do see those relationships form much sooner with offensive tackles and quarterbacks. So despite it being yes, very early in the cycle, I feel really good about Micah Smith ending up in this recruiting class. I also feel very good about Sam Greer, uh, a kid from Ohio, ending up in this recruiting class. Um, he's another guy who is about a top 100 kid in the country of course, you now have the added advantage of him being an in-state kid. He's another Archbishop Hoban kid, yeah. another Akron Man. kid. <laughs> yeah, that 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 high school, that high school. Hoban's putting out some good players right now. Hoban's putting out some very good players right now. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State would be. Th this is an amazing pair. You get these two guys. And like, I, I know neither of them are like, quote unquote, five stars, and they're both about in the top 100 in the country, depending upon whose numbers you look at, which aren't like shocking numbers. But, it's, you know, when we talk about who's going to up in what class and how it's really early, you, you got to reiterate how early it is for the recruiting rankings, too. I think both of these guys, Micah Smith and Sam Greer, are higher rated than what their current rankings state. Um, which is optimistic to say for guys who are already basically top 100, give or take. But again, you get these two offensive tackles and you're well on your way to a great offensive line class. And Kyle... We're, we're only we're only a third of the way through this offensive line class. Next up, I, I give you Maxwell Riley, an interior offensive lineman from the state of Ohio. Um, he is uh, there, there. There's a lot of sway. A lot of a lot of a lot of difference in where he is being ranked depending on which service you look at. He's the ninth overall player in the country, according to rivals. 
He's the two wow. hundred and thirty third best player in the country, according to on three, which just goes to show you that we are very early in the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> if you're curious, he's number is at thirty five on twenty four seven sports and also ESPN has him ranked, but no one takes ESPN ranking seriously. So who cares? Um The on three industry composite places them at 40 or excuse me, 54th in the country. None of that really matters all that much. It's too early to care about those numbers. It is. Fact it of the is. matter is you have a Avon Lake kid, uh, another Ohio kid who you can and should lock down early. So now, Kyle, to go with our two offensive tackles, we add one of the best interior offensive linemen in the country with Maxwell Riley. Then we have Will Conroy. Will Conroy, Will Conroy from St. Ignatius in Cleveland, or excuse me. Yeah. St. Ignatius in Cleveland. Um, this is another incredibly talented interior offensive lineman, um, he, again, according to early recruiting numbers, you know, he's not a top 100 kid like the other guys. He's still like a top 200 kid. And again, none of that really matters. It's too early to care. And especially if he's your fourth offensive lineman. That's you're st you're still doing great as far as I'm concerned. So now, Kyle, we have two interior offensive linemen to go with our two uh, offensive tackles. And now we add Adam Gunthrie. Adam Gunthrie, top 200 player, almost basically consensus. Um, Washington Courthouse, 6'7", nearly 300 pounds. First off, you take Adam Gunthrie no matter, or excuse me, yeah, you take Adam Gunthrie no matter what. I'm just throwing that out there. You take Adam Gunthrie no matter what. I don't care. You take him. But let's say Micah Smith doesn't work out. You can add Adam Gun and again, you add Adam Gunthrie no matter what. I don't care if you get Micah Smith and Sam Greer. Doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is what if you don't get Micah Smith? Well, we now have two offensive tackles, two interior guys. All of them in or near the top 200 overall players in the country just in the state of Ohio. Just in the state of Ohio, we had four incredibly talented offensive linemen, two interior, two tackles. Adding Micah Smith is a cherry on top. Adding Deron Parks, who is from West Virginia, is just another cherry on top. He's an interior guy. He's another top 200-ish guy. Some people have him a tackle. Some people have him interior. I feel like when that happens, he ends up they end up going interior. But again, whether he's ex, whether he's tackle or guard, doesn't matter a whole lot to me. Um, Point is, you take six guys, you got three interior, three tackles. And even if you just take the four kids from Ohio, you have two tackles and two guards. This is an excellent offensive line class that is being handed to Ohio State by the high schools of Ohio State, by the state of Ohio. Ohio State's got to keep them in. Ohio State He's can't screw this home. up. Ohio State cannot screw this up. They have to bring this home. Two additional names to keep an eye on uh, for the offensive line. Tyler Morrell, who is from Pennsylvania. Um, offensive tackle. And Laundre Breedy 
from the state of Ohio. Um, Rel probably a tackle. Breedy probably a guard. Um, again, here's another very talented Ohio kid. And Micah Tony, excuse me, Micah Smith, a guy who you already have a great relationship with. And then you look at Deron Parks and Tyler Morrell. These guys aren't in state, but it's Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Mm -hmm. It's Pennsylvania and it's West Virginia. You know, we, we aren't going to Alabama or Utah or California or Texas. They're just right there. We could basically stay at home. You could recruit an amazing offensive line without stepping in an airplane. Without ever stepping foot in an airplane. You could bring home an excellent offensive line. All within the state of Ohio with a couple bonus players from West Virginia uh, and Pennsylvania. Ohio State can't screw this up. This is this is the answer to all of Ohio State's woes, and it's being handed to them. They can't screw it up. And when I say they can't screw it up, I mean, they. I'm not saying that they can't. I'm saying they can't. I'm saying, please, God, don't. Like, this is being handed to you. Don't screw this up. Yeah. Don't screw and this up. With, and with that, we're going to take our first quick ad break here, and we will, we will get on to the defensive side. And we're back from the ad break and we're on to the defensive side. And let, let, let's start, Jared, with our favorite, uh, our favorite um, high school that we like talking about here. Uh, Martyr Day. We have Sean Scott from Martyr Day High School in California. And Santa Ana, California. Yeah, uh, again, big pickup player. We're ending the curse. We are ending the Santa Ana curse. We're doing it. We're doing it big. We're doing it in 2020. We're starting it in 2025. And then we're crashing all the way through it in 2026. Uh, in addition to Sean Scott, Kyle, I'm adding a pair of twins from your neck of the woods. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're you know, we, we like to bring in the twins from Ohio. And now we're going to get some twins from North Carolina. We have Andrew and Aiden Harris, a pair of defensive ends again from the uh, state of North Carolina. And that's I believe that is in the. um. In the Charlotte area. Okay, I've I've never heard of uh, yeah yep. Weddington I'm, I'm, before. I'm I'm familiar I'm familiar with Matthews. I'm I'm not too familiar with with Weddington, but Matthews I know is a suburb out there of Charlotte. So I imagine Weddington is is nearby. Um. Yeah. Additional names to keep an eye on. At the defensive end position, Tyler Atkinson, Zion Lee, and Anthony Jones. Um, oops, just scrolled the window. Uh, just like I said, a few additional people to keep an eye on. Atkinson from the state of Georgia. Georgia, uh, Big name player for sure. Um, where do you want to go now, Kyle? Well, let's, let's, let's finish up the, the defensive line and go with the tackles. All right. Um, first observation is that I messed up and I, I left the 2025 kids in this in this graphic. Awesome. 
Good job, Jared. Good job. While Jared's doing that, I will bring up the first one here out of uh, Louisiana. Uh, Jakeem Stewart, one of the best, not not just not just of the, not just on the defensive line here, just in all in all of uh, recruiting for the twenty twenty six class. Here you look at on three has a number one, twenty four seven has ten. Rivals has a number one. Just overall like one of the the top recruits in the in this class here yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit of a swing to include him in here one thing that needs to be pointed out in in regards to stewart is that it might not be that early in the cycle for him there there's talks of reclassifying to 2025 as of right now he's a 2026 kid we will treat him and refer to him as such until that changes but you, something you know, to keep you know an eye on. Jakeem's nickname is? I do not. People call him Thanos because he just absolutely destroys everybody in front of him. We already had a Thanos at Ohio State, just saying. Um, we also have Preston Carey. Uh, Preston Carey is from the state of Florida. Uh, he's an IMG kid. Um originally from New York, I believe. Um, but yeah, currently playing Florida down or currently playing football down in Florida. Uh, some additional names, keep an eye on for the interior defensive line. Uh, we have Luke. I'm going to say waffle. If, if I'm, if that's not how you pronounce that, I apologize. I included Preston Carey twice in this graphic because I am bad at my job. And how do, how do I even do that? You know, what, you know what it is? I didn't realize it was the same person. I have him actually in the notes twice, but once as uh, New York and once it was Florida. And therefore I didn't clock that I had the same person in the notes twice. Illness mistake. Uh Thanks. I, I don't know if I deserve that, but thanks. Uh, and <laughs> Tony Cumberland uh, from Arizona, he's currently already committed, but it's too early for me to care. Whatever. That's how I feel about that. All right, let's look at the linebackers, Jared. What have you got in the linebackers? Zary, Xavier Griffin. Uh, Xavier Griffin uh, is from Georgia. Um, incredibly talented player, probably a five star when it's all said and done. Um, then I have a pair of kids from Ohio, uh, linebacker, sincere Johnson and linebacker, Kobe Clapper, uh, sincere from the, uh, he's a, he's a Glenville kid and Xavier, or excuse me, Kobe is from Xavier. Uh, in Cincinnati. So one kid from Cleveland, uh, one kid from Cincinnati, sincere Johnson, Kobe Clapper. And again, both in the top 100 to 200 range. In additional linebackers to keep an eye on, I have another Ohio kid who is uh, incredibly talented and Quite frankly, I maybe should have included him in the actual class instead of Xavier Griffin. Um, I was thinking a lot about it. I went with this lineup, but I really probably could have included Storm Miller uh, in the uh, actual mock instead of having him in the players to watch category. Um, additionally, I have Thomas Davis Jr. from North Carolina, Kenneth Goodwin, uh, from Nevada and another Ohio kid, Cam Thomas at linebacker. One thing, Kyle, that Ohio, the state of Ohio has been delivering Ohio state with a fair amount of consistency lately is good defensive backs. No kidding. Jeez. And not, not letting up anytime soon here. No, absolutely not. We have, Victor Singleton, Victor Singleton uh, from Toledo, 
Um, incredibly talented. I just keep saying they're all incredibly talented, but what else do you say really at this point? Um, again, uh, numbers swing, but probably a top 100 player in the country. Um, Elbert Hill, uh, another Ohio kid who I feel excellent about coming to Ohio State. Yet another Archbishop Hoban kid uh, from Akron. Five star potential here. Albert Hill, five star potential here. L look out for Hoban. Holy hell. Holy hell, look out for Hoban right now. Yeah. I, they, they have some top end talent. I, I don't follow high school athletics enough to know if they have like a, a whole core group of kids or not. But man, they have some high end talent for sure. Um, but, you know, it's football. You can't just have like a couple stars. So I don't know if they're actually any good or not, but man, they got some great players on that team right now. Um, and going out of state for the third cornerback, I have Samir Matthews, excuse me, Samari Matthews, uh, a cornerback from the state of North Carolina. Kyle, uh, do you know where Huntersville, North Carolina is? I do not. William Amos. Hugh. Oh, that, that explains it. Why it's it's another Ch Charlotte suburb. Ah, uh, there you go. Again, uh, another approximately top one hundred kid. Some additional names. Keep an eye out for at the cornerback position. Um, Kasani Giles. Um. Giles is from the California area. Uh, we once again go back to Ohio for Henry Perrymond. Um, at, again, at the safety position. And justice for Fitzpatrick. Um, excuse me, I'm talking about this. Nope. Uh, he's a safety. Excuse me. Went to the wrong guy there. Uh, and then Amari Miller an additional cornerback, although he might be a safety. I'm not quite sure yet. Early in the cycle, of course. Um, but Amari Miller is another guy to keep an eye on. Uh, cornerback from the state of Ohio. So, Kyle, not only do you get Victor Singleton, Elbert Hill, but also Henry Perrymond and Amir Miller, four corners from the state of Ohio, who, you know, very well could be Ohio State level kids. You know, I feel pretty, I feel very good saying Singleton and Hill are Ohio State level kids. Um, I don't know enough about Perry Mond or Miller to say one way or the other at this time, because it's very early in the cycle for me too. Um, but, you know, great, great talent in the state of Ohio in the, in 2026. It's a great year for the state of Ohio talent wise, 2026. So honestly, Absolutely. not bad in 2024 or excuse me, 2025 either. Just so we're clear. Um, I think, I think the state of Ohio has been picking up. I think, I think the state of Ohio is, has been delivering a lot of great talent recently. I think they have the, the state as a whole kind of had a bad few years there. Um, Hoban getting back on their feet has been huge. And of course, um, Glenville is producing players again, like they used to with Ted Ginn senior back in place. These things all benefit Ohio state. Um, you're, you're getting more kids from the Avon Lake area. I've noticed, especially like big players from the Avon Lake area. Um, and again, all these things help out Ohio state greatly. Ready to wrap this up with some safety talk? Yes, sir. Let's do it. We have Jahir Edwards. Uh, Jahir Edwards is a player um, from Maryland. Ohio State, of course, has had some excellent um, history, recent history, uh, pulling kids from the Maryland area. Um, we also have Simeon Caldwell who's uh, a Florida kid. 
However, Kyle, despite the fact he's uh, from, from Jacksonville, he has very important Ohio State ties. Do you know what those very important Ohio State ties are? I do not, Jerry. Tell me. Tim Walton, defensive backs coach at Ohio State, is his uncle. Ah. Just, you got to take the easy ones. Especially when the easy ones is a top 100, if dare I say, top 50 player in the country, uh, which is exactly who Simeon Caldwell is. Um, you know, if one of your coaching staff's nephew is a top 100 player in the country, and he also happens to play the position in which said uncle coaches at, Not to say that all Ohio State coaches have been able to pull off such things in recent history because they haven't been. Mm -hmm. He no longer coaches here, thankfully. Um, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Slam dunk. You might as well call him. You might as well call him an Ohio kid at that point. It's obviously not. Now, that being said, we're talking about who is and who isn't an Ohio kid and where kids are from. Well, let me introduce you to Zach Fort. Uh, Zach Fort is a kid who is from Florida. He's also kind of from California. Uh, he's from one of them, but playing high school at the other. I can't remember which is which. Where Where is he playing? He's playing. IMG. Yeah. So he's a California kid, but he's playing at IMG in Florida. But his dad is from Delaware, Ohio, which, if you don't know, is a northern suburb in in Columbus. Um, you know, I'm just saying, like, a lot of a lot of home territory to go around there. Uh, again, this is yeah. another approximate top 100, if not top 50 players in the country. Um you know, his dad being from Delaware isn't going to be a home run for Ohio State in this case, especially considering, again, how, you know, highly sought after he's going to be because he is going to be. Um, but Ohio State has some good hookups with some very talented players all over the defensive back room. Again, four talented corners from the state of Ohio. Tim Walton's nephew is one of the best safeties in the country. Zach Fort. Zach Fort is uh Ohio State has a good relationship with IMG kids in general. Dad's from Delaware. That, of course, helps. Ohio State has some connections to bring home a really, really good defensive back class once again. Mm -hmm. One of the things that could be hurting when in regards to the safeties is, you know, I currently have Ohio state bringing in four safeties in the 2025 class is bringing in four safeties in the 2025 class, potentially hamper your ability to bring in guys in the 2026 class who are see that, but that it's kind of the good thing is with Caldwell and Fort and with Edwards, of course, too, these are such like top flight kids that they tend not to be scared of competition. So we'll see. Uh, other names to watch at the safety position. We have Justice Fitzpatrick. And yes, he is related to uh, former Patrick, former Alabama current Steeler uh, Fitzpatrick. I I think he's his brother, although we have a pretty decent age separation, which makes me second guess that but i think it's i think he's his brother um we also have uh nasir mccoy uh who is from the uh who's from georgia and we also have jv and currents from south carolina and i want to throw two additional names out there just to keep an eye on um 
currently just have these guys marked as athletes. Really not sure where these players are playing yet. Um, I maybe could have included Ephraim, uh, uh, Ephraim White in the wide receiver recruiting class because I kind of feel like that's where he's going. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, so I just I don't have these guys on the on the actual visuals yet because I'm not sure where to put them. Um, I've seen this name pronounced both Ephraim and Ephraim. I'm not sure if it's a long A or a short or excuse me, a long E or a short E. I've seen this name or I've heard this name pronounced both ways. Not sure which way um, Mr. White pronounces it. Um, and then from the state of Ohio, Malachi Taylor. Um, again, not really sure where to put Malachi Taylor yet at this point. Um, so I just kind of haven't yet, which might not be the best way to handle that. But again, another another name, another person uh, to to keep on your radar. And with that, uh, we're going to talk about this class. We're going to see if Kyle disagrees with any of the choices I made. And we're just going to analyze uh, this class as it stands. And we're going to do all of that, plus Kyle's Corner, when we get back after this ad break. And we're back, Kyle. Um, what do you think? What do you think of this class? Too early. Oh, of course. <laughs> we're, we're doing a podcast here, Kyle. We're playing We're playing a game. It's we're a, having good, some it's fun. Good, it's, it's, a good, it's a good mix. You got, you got some... Uh, Got some outside. You got keeping the elite talent inside here, but it's, it's just amazing looking at the talent that's in the state of Ohio. In the secondary um, that is position the, there. It's it's a crazy, crazy. So the offensive line position too, Kyle. Let's not just talk about the secondary. The offensive line. I mean, yeah, the offense. Yeah, especially in a position of need for Ohio State. One of the reasons why I'm willing to do this mock so ridiculously early, and to be clear, this is a ridiculously early uh, mock to be doing, I, and even, but it's ridiculously early. But one of the things that gives me the bit of confidence to take this early of a swing at it is a lot of talent in Ohio. You have a running back, two wide receivers, if I'm going to continue to count Chris Henry, and I am, a tight end, and four offensive linemen in this class, all from the state of Ohio. And I don't feel like any of them are like huge stretches. I don't think any of them are stretches, period. Mm -hmm. So... Out of this entire offensive line or this entire offensive class, eight of them are from the state of Ohio. Why? Why? What gives me the, you know, the gall to do a 2026 mock already? Ohio is delivering a lot of players. It kind of makes it easier to take a swing this early. And. And now with with the Ohio kids not being able to do extra activities, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how that plays we'll out. We'll see how that plays yeah. out. Uh, the yeah, Trey yeah. McNutt rule is what we'll refer to it from now on. Um, <laughs> and, and by the way, and it's not as prevalent on the defensive side, granted, but still, you have five players. If we count, well, we're not going to count Zach Fort in that. We have four players from the state of Ohio in the defense. It, the state of Ohio is delivering an excellent class to Ohio State. And Ohio State just needs to get it. And again, my early mocks, and you you go find like the first mock I did for the 2025 kids, and there's it's littered with Ohio kids. 
who are basically no longer on the radar, who maybe prove not to quite be of Ohio State, you know, of the Ohio State level or who have looked elsewhere for one reason or another. My early mocks are always overestimating the number of Ohio kids who end up in this in, in the recruiting class. I, it's, I, it always happens. Yeah. But man, I really don't feel like I'm taking any reaches here. I really don't feel like I'm taking any sort of big, stupid reaches with any of these Ohio kids. I don't feel like I'm just using some Ohio kids as filler here. I really don't. I, I think that this is incredibly realistic. You know, I could have included Nathan uh, Bernhard at the quarterback position, but I didn't. I could have done Justin Hodge or Elijah Harris in the actual mock, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't include Cooper McCutcheon in the tight end. I could have. I didn't. Laundre Breedy, Storm Miller. Storm Miller, I actually probably should have. I actually probably, I actually probably should put Storm Miller in either in addition to the three linebackers I have there or maybe replace Xavier Griffin. I actually probably should have in included Storm Miller. Um, Cam Thomas is the guy who I think also absolutely deserves to be in the conversation. Um, I He could very well prove to be at the Ohio State level. I'm not sure how interested. I don't know if like Ohio State's his ultimate goal or not just on a personal level, but Again, I could have included Henry Perrymond or Amir Miller, but I didn't. In past classes, I have definitely wedged some Ohio kids in there that probably shouldn't have been in there. I did. I really, really honestly don't feel like I've done that this time. I think this is an excellent class. And I... I for as early as it is with that caveat, with the caveat that it is stupid early to be doing this. I feel pretty good about this class that, that I mocked here. I feel pretty good about it. I don't feel great. I mean, considering how far out it is with that caveat, with that understanding, be and I'm saying this not because I think I'm amazing or because I think I did such great work. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that because look at all these great kids from Ohio and all the only thing Ohio state has to do is land them. That's my point. It's not because I, mean, I did a great job. Them. It's not because my mock is great. It's because I feel like half of this class is being handed to Ohio state and they just have to accept it. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Only time will tell at this point. Only time will tell. Do you, do you disagree with any of my choices I made? I, I can't agree nor disagree <laughs> with this. <laughs> That's a totally fair response. All right, Kyle. Um, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? That's time to end the episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I do. Um, I'm going to give a, a well wishes and um, shout out to a Buckeye great Billy Price who has now, who announced his uh, retirement from the NFL. Oh, okay. You scared a, me there for a second. No. Oh. Is yeah, it? because, yeah, well, he, yeah, he had to do a sudden retirement from the NFL because he had to like a, a really concerning, a very um, big issue with a, like a, with a blood clot oh. in his lung. Yeah. That, they found out that's... sometime in April and yeah. And he had to, he's now come out over the weekend um, announcing that he's retiring from the NFL. So the best wishes to him and hopefully he continues his recovery. Um, well, yeah. I mean, 
I don't know the way you started that. I was, I mean, it's obviously terrible, but it sounds like it's not life threatening. I would, I would think if I would think not anyway, I understand why having an issue like that with your lung prevents you from being an athlete, but shouldn't prevent you from living a pretty normal, healthy life. Otherwise, um, uh, move of blood clot is a healthy 29 year old. Uh, I'm forgetting the medical explanation. I'm, I'm not going to read all this on the air. And, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously terrible. Um, but you know, I'm happy that they caught it and I, I'm happy that he, you know, had the surgery, got it corrected and all of that. Um, 29's far too young to be retiring as an offensive lineman. Um, I hope he had some good contracts at 29. He probably had, you know, his rookie deal plus one, which honestly, you can't ever expect more than that out of the NFL to have, you know, a good second contract. Uh, but, you know, offensive linemen, of course, expect to play a bit longer than age 29. Anyway, of course, you know, hoping him all the best. Uh, one of one, one guy in a great line of high state had a great run of centers there for a minute. And he played a, you know, his part in that for sure. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, anything else, Kyle? No, that's it. That is it. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by signals Midwest. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. And of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, signals Midwest.